making a cape was something I was interested in since forever and look at this, I have it. I'm sharing the details and boy was it an experience. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. A few days ago I shared an episode where I had found 15 cape patterns in the commercial, some printed, some PDF and there's quite a lot of variety in cape design so it's not just the typical circle that you just tie around here with a collar that's like like the one that you mostly think about. A style for everyone, they're all quite different actually. And I asked you to guess what I was gonna sew and a few of you guessed. <laughs> and if you wear one out, no one's gonna be shocked. Oh wow, a cape, I've never seen that before. It's something that's been around for decades and I think it will always be around. It's just those classic pieces that I think are really worth sewing. Been over 20 years since I sewed my last cape and I'm super excited to share my cape with you. I made it back in December when I was at my parents in Chile as part of the Sew Along for Patreon that I do every month. The pattern I made was the nail cape from Style Art. I really like the design, the rating system that they have. They have it marked as experience, advanced. As I was getting ready to make this, I started visualizing how this was gonna come together in my dreams. <laughs> And whatnot because I always do that and I figured out yeah it's not so easy as I thought. Basically this is an unlined cape. The length is sort of the upper thigh. I like that length. I don't really like long long capes or really short ones that reach the waist so I thought the length was perfect. There is a banded collar right here. Everything is bound with bias tape on the outside and on the inside. Over here you have a partial type of sleeve so you do have a proper shoulder seam that has to fit properly. And the sleeve is sort of open from here and bound there and you can just take your arms through the cape, which I love. And from here on the inside of that sleeve you have a princess seam and on that seam you have inseam pockets there. Those are also bound inside, very neat. At the back you have an inverted box pleat, but it's not that there's just excess fabric that you fold into a pleat, there's a separate pattern piece that you sew in there and very clever. <laughs> on the inside you will have facings all around and you also finish everything with a bias tape. It's not the type of facing that you sew right sides together to the garment and then flip it to the other side, it's not. You just place them one on top of each other and then you bind, so it's quite interesting. Designed for wovens or structured it says so usually this is a type of in-between weather garment I would use a wool crepe a wool suiting that type of material I would even want to make one in linen so I can have a lighter version I think that would work as well I would think about a hundred times before making this cape with a structured knit. I think it would change the construction process and I'm a hundred percent sure that I would not want to be binding the cape all the way around with woven bias tape. It just wouldn't look right and I definitely would not want to be binding everything with a knit binding. That's just different. It's just, it's just way more fiddly in my opinion. So I would reserve this pattern for wovens like it's intended where you make your own bias tape that's a woven and I think everything would be much more straightforward. Only knit I would consider using is a scuba suede and I have used this in the past to make blazers and I just leave all the edges raw. So in that case, if this cape had every single edge raw, nothing bound, it would be very easy to put together. Let me tell you, you'd save hours upon hours of binding and, and yeah, it would be easy. I would just leave everything raw and maybe I'd just top stitch around the edges for decoration purposes. So that is the only knit I would consider. I chose a light to medium weight wool suiting. It's a wool blend, I'm not exactly sure of the composition. It's got two tones and you can see the fibers there. Some are really light colored and the darker ones. When I saw this in the shop, I saw it as a dark gray with beige with the lighting there. When I got home, I realized it's like a dark brown with the light color, with the beige color fibers in there. It's still questionable, like I still look at it and think it's grey and sometimes I think it's brown. I don't know, it's dark, it's fine, <laughs> I still love it. This is an unlined cape so I wanted the fabric to not be itchy, that was super important for me. So I did put it on my skin a lot in the shop before purchasing, I made sure that that was okay. Other notions you need are some type of closure method here, it just mentions a hook and eye, you could use whatever you want. I didn't use anything, I just left mine open. You also need some fusible interfacing because there are some pieces here that need that. I don't like store-bought bias tape, I don't think it looks very nice, so I took the time to make my own. To bind several layers, I think the half an inch double fold, or if you make it yourself it's an inch completed with, with the two folds inside is the best one. So I got black linen, I just drew my diagonal lines there with a white chalk at 45 degrees, I cut them at two inches and that's enough to get them through the bias tape maker. And I made pretty long ones and then I would have to minimize the joints when I was binding. Sizes from 4 to 30 
30 Australian are available up to a 63 inch hip. This actually does have multi-size options so when you purchase the pattern you can get all the sizes in the file. It's not like the older patterns where you could just get one size so that's good. <laughs> There's about four inches of positive ease at the bust which is enough for the cape to overlap a little bit or just wear it open and it'll tolerate a layer inside. You wore a long sleeve top or a light sweater underneath you would have enough space and it's a little a-lined and you have about 12 inches of positive ease at the hips. I do think you need to choose your size appropriately. Look at the size chart on the Style Arc website, look at your measurements and choose your size based on that. It will have enough ease and you'll get the proper fit for your shoulders and the neckline. Don't size up or down. I think when you start doing that, it, things might happen. <laughs> and I made a size 16. I didn't need to blend. I didn't make any length adjustments or fitting adjustments at all. I figured out they're not proper sleeves. I don't really mind the length that they come up to. That's fine. And the length of the cape I thought was fine as well. So I made no changes at all. I just printed it and made it. <laughs> I do have some sewing to share. It is a summary. I have the full step-by-step -step on my Patreon and it was a pretty intense sew. <laughs> it's got all the details there but I am going to share with you the general construction of how this comes together. How I'm going to do my binding might be a little controversial but I'm okay with it and I will explain why. There are some pieces that do need interfacing. As always I block fuse. That is a given for any of my projects, knits or wovens and I just cut a piece of fabric that's slightly larger than the piece I need to have interfaced. I interface the fabric first, then I lay my pattern piece on top and then I cut it out. So I don't cut my interfacing separately and then try to join them. I just don't do that. And then your pattern piece has less chances of distorting and shrinking and changing shape and all of those things. Let's see the sewing process. You have a front and then you have a side body. And in this area you have pockets right there on the top are the collar pieces one interface one is an interface that was just my decision this is the back and in between these two pieces is going to go this panel right here where the pleat is going to be this piece in the middle is going to be sort of floating in one way it is a sleeve i've got two sets of pocket pieces you can't just bind everything and then just start putting it together and on these areas you have notches for pockets so these are the four long ends that i'm going to bind i'm going to use my lightweight rayon to do that here are where the pockets are going to be between those notches here are the pocket pieces so after we bind these four long seams we're going to put the pocket i've got one of these long seams already wrapped with the binding you can see i just wrap it with the traditional way you would have your raw edge and your binding and you would take it and open it up to that first fold put it there and sew that first so let's pretend the pins are the sewing i mean this is valid but i wouldn't do this for binding seams that are on the inside and then you would just take your binding wrap it around pin it there and then sew again and that would catch everything in place but i think that's just an extra seam i'm just going to be doing the easy wrap around way which is just so much more simple you just place the raw edge of the fabric against where these two areas meet and then you just wrap it and pin 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 and then sew i think it's really easy and that's the way i'll be doing mine you have a lot of little marks there when i was folding the binding over i noticed they were getting lost in there they were going to be covered so I just mark them a little way over so that I can still see them and I'm going to be sewing from the right side of the fabric so this is the right side of the fabric that's the way I wrapped it and pinned it on this side so when I sew I know that's going to be very very neat at the back might not end up being super perfect but it won't matter because these seams are going to be pressed like this so the right side is the one that you want to be the best looking rather than this side so that's how I'm doing it I won't be filming all of the binding for everywhere because it will be the same in all the areas so that's how it looks on the right side of the fabric on the wrong side it still looks nice but it's always going to look nicer where you can see and where you're sewing so when this is folded inside in the seams that are going to be open that's what you'll see so that's why I'm doing it like that it is acceptable to bind like this I won't let anyone tell me this is wrong because it achieves the purpose of wrapping around the raw edge and protecting it and it's also neat so if it can be done in one step instead of two I'll take it. Okay, so here we have these long edges bound. This edge of the front, this edge of the side piece, the one that's gonna have all the pockets. This one hasn't been bound yet, that happens later and we have the same on the other side. Here is the front pinned with the side piece right there. And you can see I've got these pins here to mark where I have to stop sewing and then where I have to start again to leave the pocket opening. So I'll just sew this bit and then that bit. I'm gonna be sewing really close to the binding edge just because that's the seam allowance. Here 
Here at this mark I'm going to reinforce back tack. Here we have this front area assembled with the side piece. Pocket is done, seams are open there. This other long end has been bound as well. This is the top of the main back piece and here is a neckline, here is a shoulder and here you have this mark. So this is where we're gonna sew, right up to that mark. This seam is gonna be pressed open and then there's gonna be another panel sewn onto here. This is the center back panel for the pleat. It's just one piece, it has this shape on the top and then it's long all the way down. So what we need to do is bind this top edge here before attaching this to the main back. So this is the back piece and this is the section where we sewed. I've just folded the rest like it's been sewn but it won't be I'm just gonna do a memory crease so now we're gonna take this back panel that's a smaller piece and align it here at the bottom see and it goes up it follows the same shape this top edge has already been bounced this is now where we put these together and start binding 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 catching it all and in the end when we catch this we were gonna bind here up to the top edge this is how it looks on the top catches this so I'll just continue and then repeat the same on this other edge right there okay so all of this has been bound what I've done is transfer this mark onto the right side because I want to sew it from the right side so it's nice and neat the middle is right where that seam is so I'm just gonna sew there and there top stitching and that will help keep this pleat down so let's just top stitch this down Here we have the two collar pieces and this is so non-traditional because we're going to leave all these edges raw here because they're going to be bound. So we're not going to be sewing it and flipping it the other way like you do with most collars. We need to place them wrong sides together. So I have an interfaced one that's going to be the outer collar and this one's going to be the inner collar. What I'm going to do is paste all the edges together right on the edge so that these two layers are just going to act like one piece. I've got the cape back and I've got the neckline here. This is the right side of the cape. This is the center back pleat. There is a center seam there. Put these right sides together, the interfaced collar piece against the right side of the neckline. This goes all the way to the edge right here, all the way there. All this raw edge is going to be finished with the linen binding that I made and the seam allowance that we use to sew these together is only a quarter of an inch. You can see everything's going to match perfect so I'm just going to pin it all. And then we'll get this sewn to the neckline. Okay here are the two collars together pinned to the neckline. Everything fits perfectly. If you extend your cape you can see the collar has just been sewn there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. What we're going to do now is take the facing piece Pieces that we had sewn previously and just place them there wrong sides up as well and align them we're basically going to have a facing a collar and then the cape here you can see the facing right there where it's going to be sewn you just need to pin that and sew the same exact seam only now we're attaching the facing I'm gonna snip into these curves but not that much because this is fabric that doesn't have a really tight weave so I don't want to go that close to the seam but just enough to relieve some tension here on these curves quite a few layers here also and then when we flip this we're gonna have a really neat edge here collar coming out of there so that's all neat inside but we still have raw edges on the collar and all the way down the center front here so this is going to be finished in a few more steps when we bind everything. These are the sleeve pieces. They're different because they won't be sewn at the underarm. They'll be sort of floating over the shoulder. I've got them here mirrored. And on these edges, there's a little bit of excess seam allowance. That section here is going to be on the shoulder and this is towards the back. So these sections are going to be sewn to the back part of the cape. But from under that excess seam allowance down here and around and including this, we're going to need to bind that with the linen binding because that's the one that's going to be visible on the front. We're only binding underneath the excess seam allowance down and around there. The rest is going to be left raw because it's going to be sewn to the cape and then bound together in two layers later. Here's one of the sleeve pieces I haven't bound yet but this is what I wanted to show you that you have that excess seam allowance. So right under here is where we need to start binding all the way down and then going around that curve and then down the bottom up to there. So this is the other sleeve and I've done that. 
So right under that excess of seam allowance, I've started binding and going around the curves. Now, one thing I did here was fold in the edge so that I don't have a raw edge there. This seam allowance is gonna be caught with the cape and then bound together, so it is gonna be finished. From this edge, it's gonna have the linen binding and this is gonna be visible on the front of the cape. So now I'll just start pinning this other side. <laughs> That's how the sleeves look like, just pinned. I've got the binding all around here up to the edge and right there up to the edge and now I'm just going to sew that on. Initially I had bound everything up to the edge like the instructions say but then figuring out how this is going to come together with the cape I figured out you need to leave at least two inches unbound here at the bottom just so that we can sew this to the other piece, bind it and then continue binding. Here we can see one of the sleeves this is the area that I just unbound a little bit right there. And from there, from the hem up, I've pinned it to the back piece. So I've pinned, 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 and there are a few notches. So on the sleeve, you have these double notches right here that are gonna match the ones on this back piece. You can see this is the back because this is where the pleat business is at the back. So this is where we're sewing the side of the sleeve that's still raw. And then we go up and we see another notch. There is another one and that matches that one right there. And then we have one right here on the top of the shoulder that matches the shoulder seam. And then this is where that raw area starts. There's a notch right here on this side. So this is what we now have to catch with binding. We're gonna start from the very bottom here, going up over like a sleeve cap, continuing here, going past that edge that's already bound and we're gonna keep binding this armhole. Here we have one sleeve pinned on with the binding. I'm gonna be sewing the binding and that will actually be the seam because both edges are together. So starting from the hem, moving this piece of binding out of the way, going up, 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 sleeve cap, shoulders, and then we keep binding this to this partial armhole right there. Here's one side, this is a sleeve bound and sewn all in the same time fake sort of sleeve cap because it's not a regular sleeve and then it's caught up to there and then this is loose and then the rest of the armhole so I'm gonna repeat the same on this other side okay both sleeves have been sewn and now we still have this armhole dangling over here this edge has been bound already now all we need to do is bring it over and align it to this back seam that we've just done so this is what we need to sew there from there all the way down to there both edges have been bound this one already has two layers, this one's just one layer. But because they're bound separately, we, we're gonna be able to press the seam open. So these two seams are pinned together. I'm sure this is making more sense now. You can see how we have a type of armhole right there. That round edge, that's where your arms are gonna go in. But then, when you wear your cape, this is open on the front. So your hands are gonna come out through there and into the pockets. And that's how the cape is gonna be. I'm basically gonna sew this seam and leave a two inch opening at the bottom because that's going to allow me to bind this edge, the center front, including the collar. That's going to come over this round edge all the way up to here. Once that's bound, then I can finish the seam there and finish binding the bottom here. Here you can see the armhole up closer. This is that armhole that was just hanging loose, but now we're going to put it together with this back piece. Pretty straight seam from there, leaving a gap unsewn so we can finish the binding at the bottom later. I figured out a good order of events here for the final steps of the binding. So what I've got here is all the collar, the center front or bound around this curved edge and going off right up to the seam here. I've finished the binding there by folding it in. Also, I want it to be finished, not raw. So I'm gonna sew this in one go. All of that going here around the curve, up, 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 around the collar, down, 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 around this curved edge and then off to that side. Once that's bound, then we can finish this side seam and finish the binding on this back area of the cape at the bottom. I'm gonna start sewing from where it stopped and unstitched partially. I've got that pinned away and then I'm gonna go all the way around to the bottom. Here is the other bit that's pinned away and finish there and then that's the end. I 
I did not include the pocket. The technique in this cape is really good. It doesn't involve you snipping into any seam allowance. You, you wouldn't be able to because everything is bound. I do have a general technique video on my channel that shows you a method to put in seam pockets where you don't need to snip into anything. So I will leave that linked for you down below. I will have some thoughts about the instructions and some errors that I found at the end. So don't leave. So yeah, it might look brown. I don't know if it's gray or brown. You tell me, it looks brown on screen. <laughs> so here is the collar stand. There are two layers and both of these are together there and it's bound. You saw the binding was sort of the last step in this area. And then to finish this area, you do have a facing in here. So it was quite interesting. The facing on the back as well is all bound as you can see. And everything, shoulder seams are pressed open of course, bound separately. And then you have that type of armhole that's really interesting because you have the sleeve that comes from here but only up to there so it's bound neatly from here up to there and then sewn to this back it, it was super interesting to put together this is the box pleat at the back there's a, a bit of top stitching going on to hold it in place but it's free from here all the way down and I did press it to leave a crease this insert piece for the box pleat is in there and it's bound. Here is a type of armhole, so that's where your arm is gonna come out of, but then your arm's gonna be free. So it's like it's sleeveless, but you have this on top. There is a type of side panel. I wouldn't really call this a princess seam. It comes way further away this side than your bust apex. So I, I don't know if I'd call this a princess seam. I just call this a side panel. And right here is where you have the inseam pockets. They're tiny. I mean, you can't make them any bigger because then you need a longer cape and everything is really neat and bound in there. So you'll see this style two ways, one with a skirt, a bit more formal. I did that at my parents, so you'll see my parents' backyard, lovely flowers at the back. And then the other one's a bit more casual, just with pants, and those are from here. I just took this footage today, so you'll see that. Here is my nail cape from Style Arc. This is a size 16. I didn't make any fitting adjustments. It's got inseam pockets on the front, and it's a super cool cape. All the edges are finished with bias binding, and there's a box pleat at the back. I think the length is really appropriate, and I've got it styled here over a skirt and a black top. Very simple. I really like the freedom that a cape gives your arms, where you can just take them out. And it's sewn there partially. It's like a sleeve, but an open sleeve. There is an armhole in there as you can see and the construction was quite interesting Let me tell you you can see that the sleeve is sewn onto a seam at the back The inseam pockets are really little There's not much space and I could have put some type of closure, but I just left it There is a little stand-up collar. Everything's finished with bias binding. There's facings inside I think the shoulder and sleeve fit is super good. The pattern is really well made Everything matches and the fit is great for sewing It did take quite a while to do all the binding, but I I think it was worth it. You also see it styled a little bit more casual. Here is the same cape again, styled with pants, a bit more appropriate for winter. I do have a long sleeve top underneath and you can see the color of that top. My arms can come out. I really love how streamlined this cape is. That box pleat gives you a little bit extra ease around the hips. Everything inside is bound and yeah, it took a little while to make but it's very, very neat inside. It's just super interesting and I really like the style because it's not too voluminous. I need to press mine a little better. It's a single layer, it's not lined and I think the fit is really good at the shoulders and the sleeves. The collar has two layers and you can see that the sleeve is sewn only partially. I think the collar was super easy to sew and there's facings to finish it off on the edges. There's facings inside but you still finish all the edges with bias tape. All very neat. I really love it. I love that I could dress it up and down. It can be really casual and I'd wanted a cape for so long. I'm so happy I finally have it. <laughs> I 
I really like it. I can't wait to wear it. I wish I had a black one. I know I'm gonna really enjoy wearing this. And because of the type of print, I know I can mostly wear it with just solids underneath. So that'll be something I need to plan and think about. I'm not about the print clashing life. I just don't, don't do that. So yeah, just solids to go with this. And I think this is the main character. Whatever I wear underneath is just gonna be super simple. Now I do have some thoughts, you know, I think the pattern is really well made. The pattern itself, very well drafted. There's a bunch of notches that help you put everything together. In the instructions, you just get one page with a list and you get a few diagrams. I think the diagrams are really helpful. The list is usually written in a type of wording that is different to the terminology that I'm used to. So it does leave me scratching my head a little bit. So sometimes I try to just not look at the list that much and just try to figure it out myself. <laughs> but there was an error that I saw there. I'm like, I can't believe it, you know. When you're gonna sew that inseam pocket on that seam on the front, there's little marks where you have the opening for this pocket. And one of the first steps was just sew the whole seam. And I thought, how am I gonna sew the seam? How am I gonna put this pocket if I close that seam? So that was definitely a mistake. And then on a little line, just on a sentence, it says, if you wanna line it, line it and turn it right sides out, like bag it out, but it makes no sense. I mean, if I wanted to line this, it would involve changing the whole construction method. I'd have to modify pattern pieces to fit these facings. I mean, it would not just be as straightforward as just line it and bag it out. That was the instruction. So there was basically no instructions for lining it or any extra pattern pieces for the lining. You would have to figure that out yourself. I think that was a bit confusing because when you see the description of the pattern, it says it can be lined or unlined. So that makes me think, okay, I can choose. I'll have the pattern pieces and the instructions in there to line it, but you don't. It's unlined. That's the way it's made originally. And then lining it would be your own doing, your own figuring out. It would change the whole technique of putting it all together. I mean, it would be a sort of a big undertaking, really. So I, I would just keep it like it is. You know, when I started sewing, I didn't have instructions for anything. I started making my own patterns. I cloned my ready to wear and I started figuring out sewing construction as I went by looking at how things were made and sort of going backwards you know trial and error I used a lot of Berta magazines in the 90s and those came with a list so that's sort of my expectation when I discovered this indie world of then I found these patterns that had really detailed step by step by step and I figured out okay the, these patterns are trying to teach you how to sew style art does not teach you how to sew so it just assumes that you know and that list should be enough which I guess would be enough for a group of of people that are experienced if you just fell in love with one of the designs and you're just sort of studying on your journey you might find yourself into a little pickle there because list and what it says is really succinct so you won't get much detail there and that's why I like sewing these patterns on my patreon sew alongs because I can put my own spin to it and really show all the details for garments like this that are a bit more challenging and yeah, I really enjoy it I enjoy the process of thinking how it's gonna go and just figuring it out as I go and then you end up with something good because I really like the designs. What can I say? I have a lot of style arc patterns. I do love the designs. It's, it is unfortunate that they don't spend more time creating instructions with a bit more detail for those that are newer to this. But I guess you eventually get there. And once you've sewn things over and over and over, you start recognizing steps in your mind and how to do things. I do like to add my little twist in there. So it is a little bit freeing, but also I can for sure understand how a lot of people would be frustrated with instructions like this. And maybe in some cases, it just wouldn't allow you to complete the pattern, which is a real shame, you know? In any case, I'm really happy. <laughs> Out of all the cape patterns, the ones I liked the most were from Star Arc, and this is amazing. I'm glad, you know, I was able to sew it and I can have it, and yeah, it's just so nice. It's just a style I like. Not a lot of volume, streamlined with a lot of details and really nice fit at the shoulders, which I like. Little collar here, it's just, yeah, it's really pretty and I'm glad I made it. I will see you next with a neat garment that's sort of pushing me out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I'm excited to share. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the sewing content in this channel. It's a lot. I do aim to try to make it really helpful for you, really practical. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.